Hi, I'm Marty Nemco. This is another of my short, short stories from the next edition of my book, Soloists, which will have about, at that point, 185, maybe even closer to 200, short, short stories of introverts and outsiders facing a dilemma. This story is called The Confrontive Career Counselor. My parents stressed that you give a greater gift by giving people an uncomfortable truth about themselves than a pleasing lie. My parents walked their talk, and I'm grateful for it. They pulled no punches when I was too long-winded, not thorough enough, or too argumentative. My training to become a career counselor, a full master's degree worth, stressed the opposite. Be accepting, supportive, provide a safe space. While I didn't argue with my professors because I wanted to graduate, their rationale didn't shake my belief in the power of candid, constructive criticism over support. So, as a career counselor, I made what I believed was the ethical choice to be direct and sometimes to shake a client from too confident complacency, confrontive. For example, a client was a board welfare eligibility worker. The more I learned about him, the more I realized that in his soul, he was an entrepreneur. For example, he said that he used to be a ticket scalper and later admitted that he still does it a little. I suggested, maybe too bluntly, that he needed to sacrifice the security of that ill-suited career and become an ethical entrepreneur, but not a scummy one. I'm sure he inferred that the word scummy referred to him. He got angry with me, but fast forward a year and he was running a moderately successful online business selling used books that he gets from libraries that are getting rid of excess inventory. Another client, a licensed clinical social worker, blabbed on and on about how spirituality-centered she was, including chakras and Wicca retreats with naked sage burning dancing in the woods to banish evil spirits in favor of world peace. She said she's been trying to make her career out of doing things that are related, like yoga classes, aromatherapy, and doing healings. She's 33 years old, and I asked her how much she makes net per year. Her answer? Less than 3000 I said, you have a hobby. Do you want to continue living off your boyfriend's income? Is that spiritual? You need a career, not a religion. She hated me for a session, and then we explored more remunerative and, yes, legitimate ways to do healing. And she decided to enroll in a course using progressive exposure to help people overcome phobias. Then there was the aspiring singer. She sucked, and while I didn't use those words, I did say, you're paying me for candor. Well, sure, Bob Dylan succeeded with a bad singing voice, but you ain't no Bob Dylan. She walked out right then. Indeed, my confrontive approach was poorly received by too many clients, and my practice slowly withered and withered. So one evening after my last client of the day, I reflected and decided to be conventional. I would be a supportive counselor. So when an old guy blamed ageism for his career problems, I put duct tape over my mouth. It would have done more good to remind him of his tech lightness and his admitted poor learning speed and memory. He said, I have CRS, can't remember shit, but I played Mr. Support. I can imagine how frustrating it must be to be the victim of ageism, blah, blah, blah. When clients wanted to use creative writing to hide their employment failures and employment gaps, I remained silent and merely helped them write the resume they wanted. My practice rebounded but I reflected on how my new approach was working and felt it wasn't ethical and was less helpful. But the catch-22 is that too many clients wouldn't tolerate a confrontive career counselor. So I decided to close up shop right after I saw my client who I felt most deserved confrontation. Speaking unvarnished to you, my dear viewer, he's stupid and lazy, but he thinks he's smart and that any lack of drive comes from racism, capitalism, his parents, his boss, everything but him. He claims that the one internal cause of his torpor is immutable. I'm depressed, but it's clear that his depression isn't physiological. He has plenty of drive for things he finds fun. An appropriate job and work ethic would go a long way to curing his depression. I told him as much, and yes, at the end of the session, he said, this is our last session. As soon as we got off the Zoom, I deleted my practice's website, tossed my business cards from my desk and wallet, and unlisted my phone number. I'm now an eligibility worker for the unemployment office. Here I can, indeed I'm paid to be confrontive. Having been a career counselor, I know the lengths that unemployed people will go to to get money, at least some of them will. For example, 
More than a few clients who had bad track records at work lied and listed their friends and relatives as their boss. Oh, John was a wonderful employee. Now, for example, when a claimant for unemployment money says that they contacted a bunch of places to find work and I sense it's BS, I say, okay, I'll call them now, and I pick up the phone. Usually they say something, uh, well, maybe I didn't. I feel good about being a good steward of taxpayer dollars. I'm a career counselor who has now made a good career change. In any event, that short, short story is called A Confrontive Career Counselor. As usual, I welcome your thumbs up and accept your thumbs down. I always look forward to your comments and especially like it if you hit the share button below. Share on your social media so that my efforts can have broader impact. And I am flattered if you choose to subscribe to my channel. In any event, I do thank you for watching. I am Marty Nemco.